Hello everybody, this is uh, Dr. Kamal Preet and I am an assistant professor in DAV College, Sector 10, Chandigarh. Today I am going to deliver a lecture on a very interesting topic that is political socialization. Why I call it interesting <clears throat> is because it happens throughout our lives in whichever country we are, in whichever political system we are. The word needs to be discussed in detail and then we go ahead with the topic. Now, where does the word political socialization, how is it formed? What do you mean by socialization? It comes from the word getting accustomed to your society. What is socialization? We are born in a society, we take birth in it, Slowly we learn the customs, traditions, how one gets married, what are the values of a system, so on and so forth. Through formal and informal factors, you learn, you learn and imbibe the values of your society. And before you know, you become a part and parcel of your society. So if you're living in a country like India, you learn certain things like respecting your elders, touching their feet, you learn it from your older sibling or from your parents and so on. And slowly when you start touching your elders' feet, you just don't know. The Guru Shishya Parampara, teachers respected. So here we are respecting our teachers. So the way we walk, we dress up, what we eat, our festivals, they all slowly absorb us knowingly and unknowingly into our society. So well, I start living in a society called India. Then I learn it's a country. How do I learn it? That is where political socialization comes in. Political socialization is a vast concept, but it starts from your family. Now, political socialization again can happen knowingly or unknowingly. It's acting on you all the time without you realizing it. But slowly you start believing, gradually you start imbibing the values about your political system and yet then you start practicing it. Now, how does there are various agents? which act on you throughout life and you might imbibe some values which help you to tide in life. Now the effect can be negative or positive. Now we'll come across that slowly. Now how does a family play an active role as an agent of political socialization? A small child is playing when he overhears his father and grandfather talking politics. The child doesn't know what is the meaning of party A or party B. But suppose the father and the grandfather are supporters of party A. So he will hear, he doesn't know whether it's a toy or a book or a game or a TV show, but he knows party A is good. So he grows up for the next two, three, four years hearing good things about party A. Then elections come in and his father, grandfather, grandmother go out to vote and they take him along. Now over there also they hear their father and grandfather, members of the family saying that yes, we'll vote for party A, party A. The child still doesn't know what is a party, but he knows Wherever the name is mentioned, party A is supposed to be good. Just like he's learnt his nursery rhymes. Now when he goes to school, suppose the teacher starts talking, the boy is the boy or the girl, the child is eight, nine years old, and the teacher says, as a matter of conversation, that party A is bad. Now this boy stands up and says, No ma'am. Party B, A is good. Why? He says number one, two, three, four. This is what they have done. Now the teacher calls him and says, 
come here party b is good and party a is bad so he says why he is confused so she tells him that no party a has not done this well for india and party b has done these things for india so the child goes back home and questions his family members so the grandfather says come here i'll tell you what all party b has done this is what they have done negative for the country now what has happened the child has learned the achievements and drawbacks of party a and achievements and drawbacks of party b now this is where the socialized political socialization has started and in a very informal way so the first agent of political socialization is your family and it has an effect on you throughout your life but there are other agents which come into play second as i've just mentioned the school the educational institutes the teachers and so on now the child graduates he goes into 9th class 10th class or in college and his circle of friends grows so he knows about party a and party b and here he finds a friend and uh, elections uh, are announced and the children are discussing boys and girls are discussing which party they're going to vote for they become first time voters for example now first time voters means you've been told through the tv through the newspaper that go and vote it's your right you're very happy that you are a deciding factor in your political system now this everybody is saying i'll vote for party a and party b and one voice says well i'll vote for party c but the child the student is again confused he says which is this party c now the friend tells him or her that see party c has done this and this worked for women or worked for workers or worked for farmers or so on and so forth so look now the first agent family the second agent the educational institutes they all are acting on the student and the student has to decide whom to vote whether to actively participate or not to participate in the political system so here we go from one agent to the other agent now after this it's all the, you are bombarded with from one agent and the other which we'll discuss slowly so, so the the third the third agent of political socialization is your peer group your friends if you fall into a group where nobody talks about politics and it's considered a waste of time well the inclination will be there that why should i go and vote Uh, one vote just doesn't matter but if you fall into another group where heated arguments take place discussions take place party a b c and you're bombarded with choices and options and you start participating so your friends your peer group is the third uh, agent of political socialization and a very very crucial one now the child graduates gets a degree and enters the workplace right now at that moment for a child especially young girls and boys like you salary becomes very important because with the first salary you want a big car and a and the best of mobiles and the best of house and so on so this child has been supporting party a right party a says we will give you less salary but more of medical facilities you know to the senior citizens now this child who till now supported party a and is going to be paid less salary or he has to pay he or she has to be pay, pay, has to pay more taxes will look at the other parties and if party b says well i will give you more salary and you have to pay less taxes and senior citizens we will see to them later now this child because of his interests will shift his alignment inclination from party a to party b so at this moment his personal experience his workplace where he is working he or she is working all come into action 
at this moment from 25 years to the next 40 years he or she will think about supporting party B. Why? Because high salary, less taxes, more money to spend. Now, suppose at the age of 40, elections are taking place, the child is 40, this man or woman is 40 and um, party A says, now he's supporting party B, why now? Now party A says, oh, we will reduce taxes and uh, there will be less property tax and you can buy property, what will the child do? He or she will come back to party A, right? So your own personal experiences with the political system can shape your what you think about the political system. So that is your political socialization. Now this child who grew into a student and then into an adult and then he or she enters into old age. Now party B is saying we will not give additional facilities to senior citizens. Party A says we will give additional facilities to party A, uh, to senior citizens, right? Free medical facilities for example and so on, the best of medical facilities. Now the student will again shift to party A. Why? Because old age is looming large. And at this moment, what do you want? Salary, you have enough money in the bank. What do you want? You want good medical facilities so that you don't have to go to any other country. You want them in your own country, right? So over a period of time, there are different agents of political socialization which work on each of us and influence us to actively participate in the political system, not to participate in the political system, or partially uh, participate in the political system. So these are the few agents which actively play a very, very important role, a very effective role on us. Besides that, the symbol, the political system also has its way of influencing you. For example, through symbols, right? The national anthem, the national flag, the national animal, the pledge which we take in our assembly, all these directly or indirectly influence us. When a child goes to school, he or she does not know what is the meaning of a national anthem, but slowly within a day or two realizes that I have to stand still and sing this song loudly which happens to be my national anthem. Slowly the child is taught that this is your national anthem which praises the country and you fluff up with pride and say here I am singing the glory of my country. So even at the age of 50, 55 you might be sitting in a gathering and you hear the national anthem or as the trend is going on now that before a movie in the PVR and all the national anthem is played. We all get up, we, we, we are eating our popcorns, having a coke in our hand but we get up. Where, where does this come from? Well, it's right there from our childhood. We stand up when we hear the national anthem. We feel proud of the country. So, the Republic Day Parade, the uh, Prime, Minister, Prime Minister's address to the nation on 15th August, well, we all listen to it. And the President and the Prime Minister do not fail to make us remember our rich past. They start right from our freedom struggle uh, from the non-cooperation movement, from Mahatma Gandhi, the contribution of Pandit Nehru, the contribution of uh, Bhagat Singh um, and other leaders and remind us that we are the custodians of this rich past. Right? So the speeches of great leaders and then all of us have passed from school in the English, Hindi, Punjabi, regional languages in every book, you have some chapters which are either translated or written directly by Pandit Nehru or by MK, by the father of the nation, M.K. Gandhi and so on. They are taught to us at every stage to tell us that this is India and this is what you have to work upon. We are taught about our directly through our books, through our classrooms. We are taught the golden words 
uh, of our political system. India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. And each citizen will be given justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. These nine words are our are our golden words. They are mentioned in the preamble and this is what India stands for. So we have to know the meaning of and they are in this order only. First, the word is sovereign. We have to be independent. We are taught again and again that sovereignty is the most important thing. Sovereign, socialist, a country which looks after the welfare of the people. Profit is not the aim. So sovereign, socialist, secular. Secular country in which the minorities have special rights. It might be a Hindu dominated country, but Sikhs, Muslims, Christians, we are free to profess and propagate our religion. So secular country, the Indian political system has attached itself equally to all the religions. So if there's a holiday on Janamashtami, there's also a holiday on Eid. There's a holiday on Gurpurab and there's a holiday on Christmas. So secular. Democracy, a government of the people, for the people and by the people. Elections after every five years in which we are asked our mandate. Republic, where the head of the state is elected indirectly by the people. So we are taught this in the classes. So through symbols, through speeches of leaders, by reminding us about our rich past, these are the agents of political socialization. Besides that, we have the government floating numerous policies, sometimes for the weaker sections, sometimes for women, children, giving the names are also given after the great leaders. So we are even through the policies, we are reminded about the positive contribution which the great leaders have um, helped uh, have contributed to the development of India. Besides that, one of the biggest, biggest agents of political socialization, which is playing a Herculean role is the media. And media is not only the newspapers right now. Of course, the print media has a very, very important role. But for the younger generation, your Facebook, your Twitter, your WhatsApp account, oh, the internet connection, which has brought technology, which has brought development and news right to our doorstep. Something happens in one country, we come to know about it that very second. So media today is a very, very big agent of political socialization. It can play, again, it can play a very constructive role and a very destructive role, right? Thankfully, the media in India is free and we have so many newspapers, so many channels, TV channels, and then the internet that it's only a matter of time that the truth can be concealed. Sooner or later it comes down, it comes out. So analysis by the media bringing news right into our drawing room, not to our drawing room now, into our bedroom where we can sit, discuss, pros, cons, what an agent of political socialization and it is only growing every day, right? So this lecture, for example, it can be used uh, uh, through this media, it can be used as a very, very a uh, positive way of spreading awareness or if if I was a lecturer in a communist country where everything is controlled, well, my message would be to support so and so party, otherwise I would be punished. So there the political socialization is can be very negative. Why? Because it is controlling minds through technology, through media, what is happening? We are trying to control minds, which was happening in the communist countries where right from day one a child went into school and the children were taught communist party is good communist party is good they did not know what is the communist party but it was good so when the ussr broke down there were numerous stories where children used to go and tell the authorities well my parents were saying communist party is bad the child did not know what would happen to his parents. Well, they would be arrested, they would be taken and they would be purged. Purged means mental cleansing, right? So all these agents can be, especially the media, can be used to control the minds of the people or in the case of Western democracy like India, it can be used to um, 
penetrate nooks and corners of the country and spread awareness so these are the basically the agents of political socialization and of course your personal experiences now personal experiences if you are satisfied with the political system if you have worked hard you get a good job you are able to uh, fly you are able the political system uh, helps you to enjoy the benefits of your hard work while well, you will stay in the political system and you will grow it over here to passing the values to your children or grandchildren but if the po political system has not met your expectations well there are cases of migration that is why people migrate to the other uh, to the other countries but when they go there well again the political socialization process starts why because the political parties over there the media everybody will act on them and then they have to be according to that political system another agent very 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 important in india a multi party system you have the political parties political parties active before elections during elections helping us to know what is right what is wrong sometime twisting the facts but it is for you and me to analyze but political parties they do unveil things about each other whose benefit is it our benefit because i come to know the good side and bad side of one party and the good and bad side of the other party because one party is praising itself telling the faults of the other the other party is doing the same what is my benefit well i come to know the merits and demerits of one party and the merits and demerits of the other party too and then i can vote wherever i want to or i can be a member of any party so family your educational institutions institutions your friends your peer groups your workplace the government policies media political parties personal experiences pressure groups and interest groups we all when we are working in any place we all are members of some or the other pressure group so they work for us uh, to get us more gains from the political system or if we have been deprived to get us our due so pressure groups and interest groups are another uh, very very important agent of uh, political system besides that you have your caste groups your religious groups your religious religious groups region region groups which talk about uh, your interest your desires and you come out on the roads or you write letters to the editor or you go on a panel discussion or you have panel discussions in your college and universities where you speak your mind out and uh, if you're very if you're very good and you can present a cause very well well then you can uh, even go into politics and make it a career and serve the nation so uh, political socialization can be manifest it can be latent um, manifest means as in the communist countries it is taught that communist party is the vehicle of social change it is good workers of the world unite uh, capitalism is bad it is taught in the classrooms it is taught in the playgrounds it was rather because um, uh, after the fall of ussr there are few countries which are practicing communism and uh, um, latent socialization slowly it is as it is done by our families we don't even know how it is being uh, worked upon us so political socialization uh, is a very vast concept and it continues throughout our life uh, we start uh, we are born in a political system um, we grow in it as we grow in it we have some interest we have some expectations and desires we work for their fulfillment and um, um, how what are our interest how they can be fulfilled it is all decided by a hard work plus the reaction of the political system and all these agents of political socialization help us to uh, move forward but at the same time Uh, a set uh, we what what evolves a set of values uh, as i've told you in india equality justice liberty and fraternity uh, that these are this is what indian political system stands for and then we pass it on to our coming generation so political socialization is a very very positive concept 
a universal concept because it happens in all the political systems in all the countries the speed may vary um uh it may be very fast in some countries uh we take give and take from each other voting age reduced uh, from 21 to 18 in the last century in many countries so india also uh, adopted it and voting age was reduced from 21 to 18 years in some countries it might be regressive Pol political socialization may be regressive it might be taking the country back into dark ages right but uh, in most of the western democracies we all talking about what was french revolution all about it was about liberty equality fraternity india as i told you we talk about justice where everybody should get their due there should be no deprivation um, that is why government takes uh, is taking extra effort to finish off el uh, eliminate caste system and any differences because of region or language and so on so political socialization thus is a universal phenomena which can be used very effectively to transmit values from one generation to the other thank you